What is going on guys? Welcome to a new tutorial and today I want to show you a process on how you can turn yourself or anyone really into this. First I will show you how I recorded myself for this and then we'll hop into After Effects where I'm going to give you options on how you can customize it so you can get your own unique piece of work for social media or your client projects. Alright, talking about the base video. Of course this is a key part of the project, so you can either get a stock footage of someone else or for example an animal or like I said record yourself if that is what you want. So let me show you a super easy way on how I did it. So because it's still a daylight and I don't want to wait for the night, uh, I found a darker place over here in the house and also I have this light. And I'm trying to find the best position that will give me nice shadows. So for example over here, you can see I'm getting hard shadows on my nose and also on the left side of my face. But at the same time, I'm still keeping those highlights under my eye. And because I have a window over there, I can also try to put it here and that's gonna give me less of a shadow. As you can see, it's much brighter on this side of my face. And again, if I would want much darker then it's completely, almost completely darkened out. So I think over here something like this will work perfectly because I want to keep this highlight under my eye. And if you don't have any studio light, then don't worry, it's totally fine. You can just use a natural light from your window. It's gonna give you decent enough results anyway. So that's just me practicing. And uh, on the other side though, if you have a studio and you have, for example, a black background, then you could save the work for not cutting out yourself because you will have the black background immediately. Alright, I think super easy, super straightforward, it's time to record the video and throw it into After Effects. So let's create a new composition, we can name it main render and full HD resolution with 30 frames and 5 seconds duration. Let's press OK and we can drop in our base video. So I originally recorded it in 4K resolution, so we can scale it to 50% to make it fit the frame. And then I'm gonna double click on the layer and I'm gonna find the one that I like the most, so I think it was this one where I'm looking down and I'm sort of opening my eyes right at the camera, so we can clip it over here and then we can close it and now we have this footage and I also originally recorded the video in 60 frames and as you know we set the composition to 30 so let's go to time and go to time stretch and what we can do is we can double the stretch factor to 200% and because we originally recorded it at 60 frames it's gonna be still super smooth Perfect, so now comes the part where we are gonna cut out our cells from the background. So let's double click and click over here on the Roto Brush tool. And I'm gonna use this tool to basically draw on myself to tell After Effects where to drop the borders. You can see it immediately outlined myself with the purple line. So I'm also gonna draw on the shoulders over here. Here it goes over, so I'm gonna press Alt or Option and draw with a minus to delete these parts over here. Perfect, and if you have complex frame, for example here with the hair, I can also go and select a refine edge tool and then I'm just gonna draw around my hair like this. Perfect, so now we just have to go and cut this one over here because we will not need that many frames. And let's go to the front just to double check that After Effects is gonna select everything properly. Here you have to wait a while as you can see here on the frames until After Effects finishes analyzing it. And then let's go to the other side at the end over here. We can also cut this one. Now we just have to wait a couple more frames, 144, until After Effects finishes analyzing it. By the way, I'm not sure about you, but it's super weird for me to work and look at myself like all this time. <laughs> it's really weird. Perfect, so this is the last frame and we can just check it. The outline is nicely around my body and also the hair. So the last thing that we are missing is just to click on the freeze over here. Now we just have to wait one more time until After Effects releases all the frames for us. Perfect, now we can close this layer and we can press Command or Control Y to add a black solid and press OK and let's put it at the bottom. And I want to just a tiny bit adjust the roto brush settings because as you can see we have here the white edge over here, also here on my shoulder, also here in the hair there is white spot so let's first increase the feather to let's say from 5 to 20 over here and then let's also shift the edge from 0% to let's say minus 80 I think we can do quite a lot because I want myself to blend in very well into the black background and the same thing we will do here for the refine edge mat because that's about the hair where we use the refine edge tool so let's also increase the feather let's say 20 and the shift edge, I think here we can go all the way to minus 100 just 
as you can see just so it perfectly blends in to the background like this and now we can finally start having some fun with the effects so first let's search for a hue and saturation and let's put it to minus 100 because i want this to be purely black and white and then we can also search for a curve effect and let's start playing around with this curve so i think a nice s curve which is below something like this will work fine for now i can of course adjust it later and i also want to decrease the overall highlights because it's still a bit too bright for me so let's search for brightness let's decrease the brightness quite a lot um, it's gonna make more sense later on throughout the video as you will see but i'm gonna set it to minus 100 for now and we can also search for the first blur effect and for this one we are going to use a compound blur and by default it's a 20 but I think we can experiment and put it to 100 straight away and I also immediately want to prepare the final look with the texture and with the noise because it's going to define the way how we are gonna work with the blur later on so let's add an adjustment layer by command alt y or ctrl alt y and search for noise hls let's apply that and I'm gonna switch it from uniform to grain and the lightness let's increase to 12 percent and in the noise phase i'm gonna press alt and click on the noise phase stopwatch and first i'm going to type a posterize time we can go with eight and then press enter and on the next line i'm gonna put random and then thousand so the noise is different every eight frames and then if i go back to project uh here i have prepared a paper texture which is just a loop of different paper textures i'm gonna put it down below uh so you can download it if you want to use this one as well so let's put it on the timeline below the noise we can scale it and then i will switch the transparency mode to soft light and you can see it gives us this interesting textured look so what we can also do let's search for levels Let's apply that and now we can play around with the texture itself. So if you prefer, for example, more contrasty look like this, then of course you can use the slider or if you want it less strong, then of course you can drag it more to the left side like this. This is just a preference, but I'm gonna put it slightly to the right side. And the overall look is still a bit too bright for me. So what we can also do is go to the brightness and maybe put the minimum of minus 150. And I will go back to the curve effect and I will play around with that a little more and I'm gonna drag it lower and lower so I get even higher contrast and less brightness like so. And then we can start playing around with different scenes. So I'm going to the 10 frame mark and I'm gonna cut it by command shift D. And for this one, I'm gonna increase the maximum blur of the compound blur to 300. And I want this one to be a little bit brighter. So let's maybe decrease the brightness to minus 80. And I also want to bring the right side of my face a little more. So I'm gonna put this point on the curve slightly higher and you can see I'm bringing the right side of my face a bit more perfect. So let's go to 20 frames like so. Again, Command Shift T to cut the layer. And for this one, I want to show you something a little bit more advanced. So let's go to one second and 10. Let's cut it again. And we will create a new composition. So let's go to project and click here and let's call this a blur map and five seconds that's fine and let's put the black solid that we created before onto the timeline and then i'm gonna select an ellipse tool and i'm gonna draw a white circle like this it doesn't really matter where and i will search for a fast box blur and let's give it let's say 75 of radius yeah that's gonna work and then i will press p and shift s to bring out the position and scale values so let's set the keyframes and then I will go by pressing Ctrl or Command and right arrow four frames forward. And then I will just put the circle somewhere else and then we can also scale it, for example, then again four frames, then maybe somewhere here and then I can also scale it down. And I'm just trying to add some variety to it. And I'm also staying on the left side of the composition because obviously my face is mostly visible on the left side. So because that's where I want this to be mostly visible. So maybe this one can be really large and we can put it somewhere lower like this. And then I will select all the keyframes and I'm gonna right click and select toggle hold keyframe because I don't want any in between animation in there. So just like this, perfect. So let's close it and let's go to project and bring the blur map onto our timeline. 
I'm gonna align it and of course we can cut this part. I'm gonna duplicate this base video, so Command or Control D. And over here on the bottom one, I will completely delete the compound blur. So let's get rid of that. And in the top one, I will scroll down to the compound blur and select the source to the blur map like so. And we can also decrease the blur to 200. And then if we disable the blur map, you can see now we have limited the blur only onto the map which is this white circle and the last thing that we are going to do with this part is we are going to introduce an adjustment layer so command option y again let's cut it and let's make sure it's aligned to only this part and then we can search either for colorama or triton that's totally up to you i'm going to search for colorama and in the output cycle you can of course use any preset that you want but i'm going to add my own colors so first i'm going to put solarized blue and this one i want more navy all right and then over here i will introduce this color which is this code if you want to use the same one and then on the left side i will add a subtle light blue color something like this now the only thing that we are missing is just to drag the adjustment layer only onto the blur map so let's add the track mat and then switch it from alpha mat to luma mat and now as you can see we have applied the blur and the color only onto the part that we need which is just a white circle and we just applied this really cool effect i really like for example this one this one looks super cool perfect so that's this technique and i'm gonna show you one more for this one we will do something super simple let's again duplicate it command or control d and over here i'm gonna again delete the blur and then let's click somewhere else so we don't draw a mask and i'm gonna make a basic rectangular shape something like this across my eyes for example and let's put it above our video so like this let's introduce a track mat again onto the shape i'm actually going to decrease the blur of the bottom layer to let's say 100 just so it's not that much blurry okay let me let's say 150 all right perfect so i created a couple of more variations so here for the eyes then this one which is rotated and then over mouth and then i also duplicated the adjustment layer that we created for the blur map with the colorama effect and then to apply the color only onto the rectangle part then you just have to set a track mat again onto the shape layer and also what i think might be good to do is go to the output cycle and switch these two colors because now it's pretty dark so if we switch the blue and the green color and then i feel like it gives us much better look because it just stands out more and if you ever get tired of the color that you already have here then of course you can just go to this green one and then we can change it for example to rich orange color like this and then you have to copy the color ram effect on the other adjustment layers but that's pretty much it and to finish this animation off i added some extra little details so in the top adjustment layer i added an extra curve effect just to make it a little more dramatic like this and we are using a basic s curve over here and then i also added extra geometric shapes and text effects as you saw in the final results so if i for example go to the geometric shapes you can see that these are just basic shapes which are just popping onto the screen like this and just to give them this extra grungy look i also added white solid with fractal noise that looks like this and then it's track matted onto it so it doesn't look super smooth and i believe there is an extra layer style with outer glow oh yeah you can see that there is an extra outer glow with these settings so it also has this subtle glowy effect and the same thing with the text and over here is just some words like expression, motion, design and stuff like that. And then also this final title, which is a basic text animator with blur and opacity, I believe. You can see here opacity and blur and then it's just appearing like so. And this is what we've got. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned something new and if you have any questions or doubts just drop them down below in the comments, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And feel free to check my newsletter down below where I share weekly tips on running a successful solo business either for motion designers or anyone really. So that is it and I'll see you next time.